to Primary Pal lesson. I hope you had a wonderful week. I did. Yes, are you ready for a lesson this morning? It's a very interesting one because it's something that is about something that we all have. Something big. Something that we are so grateful to God. That's that, that something that makes us to talk, it makes us to feel, it makes us to be able to do things. Does anyone remember what that was? Yes, our mind. What do you think? That's our topic. But before we continue, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you woke us up. We thank you, Lord God, that you gave us this time to learn our Sunday school lesson. Come and teach us. Come and help us. We want to be good girls and good boys. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, like I said, we have a wonderful lesson about our mind. It's so big. It's like the boss of our body. It's in our head, our brains. Have you heard about that? You all have brains. Yes, that's why you can watch me teaching this lesson. If you didn't have brains, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't even know that it's Sunday today or you need to be listening to your lesson. Thank God you have a mind. So we are so grateful to God for giving us a mind. You know, even though we can't see the mind, but we can see what people do to show that they have a mind. Let me show you what I can do because I have a mind. Wow, I was trying hard to use my mind. The little baby is using his mind to get those colorful rings to build a pole. I can also tie my shoelaces. Can you see? I know most of you, you can do the same. And you can do so many things. You can dress yourself up. Sometimes you are able to put on your coats. Yes. You are able to read. Yes. All these things. It's because we have a mind. So we are so thankful to God that he's given us a mind. Let us see what the Bible says we should use our minds for. So for our Bible text this morning, we are going to read from Genesis 6, verse 5 to 7, Psalm 119, verse 113, Isaiah 26, verse 3, and Philippians 4, verse 8. For today, we are just going to read Philippians 4 verse 8. So you need to listen carefully because these are the things that God wants us to use our mind to think about. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things wow isn't that wonderful that god actually teaches us what to think about do you know why we need god to help us is because the mind we have the willpower to choose what to think about and it can change that's why sometimes you hear people say, oh, I changed my mind. God gave us that willpower to be able to change our mind. But you know what? We want to be able to change our mind from thinking bad to thinking good. That's a good change. And also the other thing is, if we don't do what the word of God says we should do, the devil wants to use our minds to do bad things. So we have to be very, very careful of what we think about. I'm sure we are all so grateful that we, we have a mind, aren't we? That's why most of you, you can do puzzles, you can play some games on the computer. Yes, I know some of you, you have computers, you can use them. You can use some of your toys. 
that are, have a remote controls. Yes, you can use remote controls. Great. But we also want to use this mind that we are so grateful for to do good things, to think of good things. This same mind is the same mind we use even when we go to nursery or to school. We are able to solve uh, some problems. We are able to do some maths. One, add one. What's the answer? Yes, T. It's because our minds are working. So we are so grateful for this mind. So we need to be very careful how we use it. Because in the other text that we didn't use, uh, in Genesis, you know, God was not happy when people were using their minds to keep thinking of bad things. Do you know that's why he destroyed people? When he told Noah to build an ark, only Noah and his family were saved. And the rest of them, because they were not using their minds properly, they were destroyed. We don't want to be destroyed. No, I'm sure we all want to go to heaven. We all want to be good boys and good girls. So we are so grateful for our minds. We want to use it for good. Can you imagine if you were like this, my friend? I've got a friend here today. Elsa, she's called Elsa. But you know what? Elsa, can you read? Read this book. Oh, she can't read. Elsa, can you tie these shoelaces? She can't. Can you imagine if you were like Elsa? Who say, okay, do you want chips? Do you want chicken? You can't answer. Do you want a bike for Christmas or something nice? You can't even answer. But thank God you have a mind. I know some of you are already thinking of what to ask for Christmas because you have a mind. That's why we are so grateful to God. If we use this mind to think of good things, the Bible actually says we will have peace. When we go to sleep, we will sleep well because our mind is thinking of good things but if you are thinking of bad things you'll be thinking oh oh that girl who was doing this uh, I think I want to do this when I see her tomorrow you, you can't even sleep if you think of such kind of things you can't sleep but if you think of good things you will sleep very well the key statement for this lesson is I am thankful for my mind so aren't you thankful for a mind Aren't you thankful that God gave us something that helps us? It's like a robot. It's like we have everything inside us. Whatever we want to do, we just find ourselves thinking of it. Or if we want to go to a certain place, we just find ourselves thinking of how to get to that place. And then we get there. God is so wonderful. So, children, I just want you to remember that. We should save God with our minds. That's why our memory verse says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. So we also want to save God with our mind and the whole of it. And God is going to bless us. How many of you are going to say, God, help me to use my mind to save you, to think about working for you, to think about reading my lesson, think about singing for you, think about playing instrument for him, think about being nice to your friends. That's good use of your mind. God bless you. I'm sure you are going to do that. Thank you so much. And that's the end of our lesson. But for next week, it's Lesson 16A titled, An Amazing Message. Before that, we have an activity for this week. Ages 2 to 5. In the thought balloons below are several different fillings a person might have. Draw in the face to match each filling. Anyone at home will help you with it. 
ages 6 to 8, find and circle the words that are about honouring God with our minds. God help you to do your activity until we see again next time. God bless you. Bye. Memory verse, nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Second Peter 3, 13. Title of our lesson is The New Heaven and the New Earth. Her Bible text is taken from Revelation 21, 1-27 and Revelation 22, 1-5. Our selected Bible verses are Revelation 21, 1-4 and 27 plus Revelation 22, verse 5. Let's open our Bibles and follow as I read. Revelation 21 verse 1 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. 2 And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 3 And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And then 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or make it a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life revelation 22 reading verse 5 and there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither light of the sun for the lord god giveth light and they shall reign forever and ever amen let's close our bibles and let's listen to the lesson. In the Bible passage we've just read, God revealed to John the Beloved that he was going to destroy the present earth and heaven and recreate a new earth and a new heaven. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven from before the throne filled with the glory of God. Behold! The tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. Logan in our lesson could not imagine the sight of the new Jerusalem descending from heaven as described by John the Beloved shown in the clip. As a great thundering storm roaring, Logan heard voices of overcomers in his ears saying, Worthy is the Lamb. Logan imagined walking through one of the twelve gates made of single pearl, surrounded by massive wall of crystal jasper, tree of life bearing twelve kinds of fruits. Everyone so happy people strolling along the street of pure gold, beautiful pure river, also crystal clear. No death, sorrow, crying, or pain. God prepared the city himself for you and me. And someday it will become a reality if we prepare for it here on earth. No darkness because the glory of God and glorious light of the Lamb brightened every corner. No need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Logan's eyes could hardly comprehend the magnificence of the holy city. Again, Logan heard a voice saying, I am Alpha and Omega, 
the beginning and the end. And we give unto him that is the task of the water of life freely. It will be great, isn't it? God will help us all to make it. So, let's bring the lesson home to ourselves. Looking at the following questions. One, what great events from what we've studied in the past precedes the coming of the new heaven and the new earth? That is the great white throne judgment where books will be opened listing unrepented sins. Two, why do you think God will destroy this present earth since Satan, his angels and followers will be cast into hell? Because the present earth where we are is defiled with sin and God is holy. Three, what will not be found in that new Jerusalem? Anything that defile it or walk at abomination or make it a lie. So, our key statement is, it's going to be great. Let us make sure we have our three Christian experiences and our ways are right before God. God will surely help us and prepare us all for heaven. Our activity is, read the verses given and complete the puzzle. Our next lesson is Lesson 118 titled, A Look at the Problem. May God bless us all. That's the end of our lesson. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for telling us that you are going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Please, Jesus, help us. We want to be with you. We want to be among the overcomers. Please, count us body. Count us feet. Jesus, we thank you for the primary lesson as well. Jesus, come and be with us. Save our soul. Wash us clean in your blood. Write our names in the book of life, Jesus. Make our mind pure. Let our mind think of heaven. Don't let our minds say bad things. Let our minds say good things. Let our mind talk of heaven. Do this and more for us, Jesus. For we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye. God bless.